Hi, my name is Abigail. I'm going to give a brief Dvar Torah about the halacha um, surrounding the minhag of hiding the afikomen, um, which is something I've been researching a lot le lately. Um, I'm not going to give the, you know, the names behind all the sources just because I'm very limited for time, but um, I have compiled all of my sources into a source sheet. So if you would like access to my source sheet or any of the sources, just feel free to reach out and I'm happy to send it. Um, so regarding hiding the afikomen, I would say that um, the halakhic approaches are broken into two camps. Camp number one is, uh, is uh, let's give halakhic reasons for this minhag. Camp number two is, let's give halakhic reasons why this minhag is bad. <laughs> um, so I'm going to go through some, you know, reasons that fit into all, all you know, fit into both camps. So some reasons given for the minhag. Um, are that one, uh, hiding the afikomen is, you know, it's something different that you do and it's something that keeps the children awake um, and they can only ask questions while they're awake. So it keeps them awake, able to ask questions and it keeps them engaged. Um, so hiding the afikomen is, you know, it, it's uh, something different you do on the night to keep the children engaged and awake um, so that they're able to participate. The second explanation is that hiding the afikomen gets the children to love the mitzvah of afikomen because they associate this game that they're that they enjoy with uh with this uh this halachic entity and we combine it and get them to you know have uh, a, uh, an emotion of joy associated with the with the mitzvah a third explanation is that um hiding the afikomen is a way to prevent the matzah that's going to be used for the afikomen from being eaten so um so you know, you can't fulfill your obligation of, of eating afikomen if the matzah gets eaten accidentally along the way. And so you would, you could assign someone to guard the matzah to prevent it from being eaten. Um, in some instances, this could be children. Children can take the matzah and put it somewhere else and, you know, protect it and prevent it from being eaten until it's time to eat the, the, the matzah. A fourth explanation is that, you know, children stealing the afikomen and hiding it is a zecher to the nace in, um, in, in Mitzrayim when uh, dogs were prevented from howling or making loud noises um, because dogs are, are, were usually out and about and would bark when um, thieves were coming by. So thieves were more able to, um, had an increased chance of succeeding in their uh, thievery because there were no dogs to, um, to announce their arrival. Um, and so this is a zecher to that, where um, children are able to roam free and steal the matzah because, uh, because on, on this night um, in Egypt, the dogs were silent. So I would say that um, those four explanations fit into the camp of we're going to see this minhag of uh, children stealing the afikomen and, um, and, and hiding it. And we are going to you know see it as part of the you know, part of the, the, the structure of the night, part of the minhagim of the night, and we're going to give an explanation for it um, to, uh, to make it more meaningful and really, really tie it to the, um, to the, the, tie it to the, you know, Seder of the night. This, the second camp, which is that, no, this is a problem. This is halakhically a problem. We should not be stealing the afikomen has uh, two common reasons I found. One is that, um, we're teaching our children to steal. That's not a good thing. You know, if non-Jews see that we're um, teaching our children to steal, they're going to be like, look at these Jews. They're, uh, they're teaching their, their children to steal matzah. We can't trust them. That's obviously not good. Um, the second reason is a little bit more, um, a little bit more complex, which is that the afikomen is supposed to be a representation in a way of, um, of the carbon Pesach, which we don't have anymore. For the carbon Pesach, you had to watch it the entire time. You, you couldn't let it out of your sight because there couldn't be any Hesach Adat. Um, there really couldn't be an interruption between, um, between when you brought the carbon and when had it be a part of your whole meal. It couldn't disappear at any point because then it'd become puzzle. And so shouldn't we be treating the thing that is, you know, representing the Karm Pesach for us here? Um, shouldn't we be treating it that the same way? And so if the children steal it away, if it's no longer under our watch, isn't that a break in the Shmira? Doesn't that make it puzzle? So, um, so
so I would say that fits into the second camp of, you know, the minhag here is, um, minhag is a, it's a problem and it's, um, it's contradicting the halacha, which we really have to hold higher than the minhag. Um, I think, uh, that two common approaches that I've heard to the institution of minhag in general is either that minhag is terrible. It's a parasite on the, even though it's binding, it's a parasite on the halachic system. Um, because it, you know, it, it allows people who aren't necessarily as educated or authoritative or as authoritative to, um, to impact the system in a way that, that um, isn't always structured um, or as structured. Um, the other approach is that minhag is fantastic because it allows people who don't have um, like an instituted halakhic authority to impact the halakhic system and um, and it, it, it creates an opportunity for um, community members.